More and more cameras, both consumer and pro models, are starting to list built-in Wi-Fi as a feature. But whether your Nikon or Canon DSLR comes with built-in Wi-Fi, I guarantee it can't do all that the Cam Ranger can do. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. The Cam Ranger is a Wi-Fi remote control for most modern Nikon or Canon DSLRs, and it works in conjunction with a free app that runs on your iOS device, Android, Mac, or PC. It gives you remote viewfinder, shutter, and camera settings controls. These days, many new Canon and some Nikon cameras have built-in Wi-Fi. And then, with a free downloadable app from the manufacturer, you can send images from your camera to your smartphone and then use your phone's data connection to upload images to the web. Another use of Wi-Fi is as a remote viewfinder and shutter control. But no matter which Nikon or Canon camera you have, built-in Wi-Fi features can't compete with all that the Cam Ranger can do. Even if your camera has built-in Wi-Fi, you keep it turned off. Instead, you connect your Cam Ranger to your DSLR via the provided USB cable, and you get tons of control and all kinds of shooting options. I tested the Cam Ranger with my Canon 70D, and while I think that Canon has done a great job with their built-in Wi-Fi, I'm amazed at all the additional things the Cam Ranger can do. Getting started, I followed the easy setup directions and downloaded the free iOS app to my iPad Mini. I got a couple of error messages along the way about the connection, but I didn't really have to do anything to fix those errors. I just dismissed the error messages and the connection started working. I kind of expected to see the viewfinder right away on my iPad, but you do have to touch the eyeball icon on the Cam Ranger interface and then you'll see it. And right away, I saw that the iOS app works both horizontally and in vertical orientation. Using the app was really intuitive. I touched on the various controls I wanted to reset, and it all worked as you would expect. I also found that the things that you can't adjust, but things which you might want to know when you're working remotely, may be listed, but they're going to be in darker gray. For example, changing shooting modes on my camera can only be done using the mode dial on the camera itself but the mode that it's in will be displayed on the Cam Ranger interface so that you know what controls you can adjust remotely. And there are times that in order to take advantage of a particular feature of the Cam Ranger remote software, you'll have to be in manual mode. Like if you wanted to capture multiple exposures for HDR, you'll need to be in the manual shooting mode. Let me quickly run down a list of some of the things that Cam Ranger does so that you can see why it's so much more than any camera with built-in Wi-Fi. There's the obvious stuff that you would expect like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and even metering mode and exposure compensation. Beyond that though, Cam Ranger gives you lots of ways to capture bracketed sets and do interval shooting. Bracketing can be done with shutter speed, aperture, or ISO. You can even capture more than just three exposures in a bracketed set, so if your camera is limited to just three per set, you now have a new option. You can even combine HDR bracketed sets with an interval timer for time-lapse HDR photography. You can touch focus and you can manually focus. You can even double tap on the screen and digitally zoom your image preview to check and adjust your focus. And you can quickly switch to manual focus if you'd like to fine tune your manual focus while you're zoomed in in your preview. You can pick various characteristics for your remote live view, like grid overlays for composition, a night mode that has a red overlay so that you can keep good night vision while you're using the otherwise bright screen of a remote control device like your iPad. I even found that you can enable focus peaking and both highlight and shadow warnings. Something that really impressed me was the variety of shutter release options that I could control remotely. My camera has single shot, low and high speed burst shooting, and I could pick which one of those I wanted remotely. Now my first attempt at burst shooting, I tried touching the shutter button several times quickly on my iPad, but I got a bunch of error messages. 
Then I tried just holding down the button on the iPad and it worked. It shot a full burst and it filled up the buffer. Then, without flipping the switch on the camera itself, I switched to movie mode and started capturing video. And I did all this remotely. And you can even change the focus points during filming using autofocus or manual focus adjustments. Though, depending on your camera, you might just want to use manual in order to avoid any possible AF focus hunting. When you shoot, all your images are saved to your camera's memory card, as you would expect, and you get thumbnails of your images sent to your CamRanger equipped device. Then, you can tap a thumbnail to download a bigger version of the image to your smart device and inspect it in the CamRanger app. Then, if you want to save it to your Photos app that's built into your iPad, that's a separate button press and download. Now, one thing I noticed was that the thumbnails, the previews before and during shooting, and the final images that I reviewed were all just slightly soft, but the actual images that the camera captured, and then if I downloaded the photo to my iPad and looked at it that way in the photo app, those images were all crisp. Because of the slightly soft preview, I found it a little difficult to be precise with manual focusing remotely. However, this is related to how each specific model of camera handles their live view images, so it's not really a limitation of the CamRanger itself. Depending on your model, your live view sharpness may be better. The remote live view stream is between 7 to 18 frames per second. Now that's going to depend on your camera, your remote device, the one with the app on it, the distance, and then any interference that's going on and so on. I think I was getting around 7 to 10 frames a second during most of my testing, so Keep in mind that while you can capture stills or video at whatever rate your camera is capable, what you see on the CamRanger's app in the Live View preview may be far lower as far as frame rates go. Don't worry though, all the video or stills that your camera captures will be just fine. When it comes to reviewing the images that are on your camera's memory card, you can do that remotely, and you can even delete images from your camera remotely. I shoot RAW plus JPEG, and I noticed that during image review that every other image had a little red R in the bottom right corner telling me that that was one of my camera RAW images. Now let's say you're a pro shooter, and you work with an art director who's on set during your shoot. Imagine handing him or her your iPad with CamRanger, and then you just use your camera and snap pictures as you normally would. You can do that and everything you shoot is going to pop up in review mode on the iPad. And don't worry about your art director taking remote control of your camera because you just put the CamRanger app in client mode and then you have total control directly on the camera. Now, taking that to the next level, multiple users can have their own smart devices with the free CamRanger client app installed and then they tap into your primary CamRanger app signal then several separate users at once can be in a review mode during a shoot. And if you're worried about your images ending up on one of those remote devices, you can even have a watermark on all the images that others see remotely. There's even a rating function in the app so that your client can rate images as you review them. And finally, during image review, you can set up a multi-panel view for comparison reviewing. It strikes me that the CamRanger is the answer to the question, what cool Wi-Fi functionality do you wish you could use in your photography setup? Adding a Cam Ranger to your Nikon or Canon DSLR will give you a host of new remote shooting and review controls, bracket set options, and tremendous sharing options as well. It's a state-of-the-art tethered shooting setup that goes beyond most any other setup available. There's just one more thing you might find a little bit interesting. After each of my reviews, I always have to give back the gear, but sometimes I'm so impressed by a camera or a lens that I buy one for myself after reviewing it. I'll be buying my own CamRanger. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography, 
From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.